One of the things that struck me in Food Matters was you talking about the destructive food system. And you'd think for this whole idea of having, you know, f trying to feed a nation w when we don't grow enough to feed the people the pyramid that we give them in the first place. Yeah, you know, I'd, it's interesting you mentioned that because I'd forgotten about that. Um, yeah, there have been studies that show that uh, if Americans were to eat as many fruits and vegetables as the USDA recommends, which by the way is probably not enough, we're not growing enough fruit and vegetables. We'd have to import fruit and vegetables because our agricultural system has been so twisted to grow soy and corn, which are basically the two commodities that feed all the animals we eat, which are 10 billion a year in this country, and that are turned into high fructose corn syrup and other corn products and soy oil and other soy products and essentially comprise a, lo a large part of the highly processed food that we eat, which is a large part of what we eat. So if you look at, if you look at, um, if you look at the structure of the typical person's diet in the United States, they're getting about 90% of their calories from animal products and highly processed food and about 10% of their calories from plants. And the strong, a very, very strong argument can be made that we should be getting exactly the opposite. 90% of our calories from plants and 10% of our calories from whatever, whatever else gives us pleasure. It doesn't matter that much. But if, if people in the United States up their plant intake to 20, 30, 40, 50% of their calories, it would be an amazing, amazing transformation. What does my lunch look like then if I make these changes? What does my pantry look like? What does my fridge look like? But there are some things that people absolutely have to have to, to be a home cook. Well, the pantry thing, you know, it's in all my books and it just depends on how, how big or how little you want your pantry to be. And the, the staples are the staples. And actually they're not that much different for a food matters kind of conscious eating way of eating than they are from a typical American diet eating unless you buy a lot of junk food and keep it in your pantry. But you know it's important to stock up on legumes and whole grains and things like that. But really it's not, I think it's interesting, I can't quite figure it out, but suddenly there's an interest in, I've been talking about pantry stories for years and suddenly there's an interest in it and I think it's because people are really understanding, you know, this isn't Europe in 1925 and you walk down to the market with your little basket and you get this and you get that and you do it every morning at 1030 or your servant goes or whatever our fantasies are about how we might eat if we had lived in a little village. It, it's nonsense. We shop in supermarkets. Everyone shops in supermarkets. You can talk about farmers markets all you want and great stores and specialty stores and all that. The, you know, 95 percent of the food in this country is purchased in supermarkets. So that's where we eat. It doesn't matter. You don't need to, to think, oh, I'm going to go shopping today for tonight's dinner and then I'm going to go shopping tomorrow for tomorrow, it, it doesn't really have to be that way. You surround yourself, you load your kitchen up with the stuff that is going to make up most of what you eat and then you buy the occasional piece of meat or fish or chicken or tofu or, or really fresh, beautiful vegetable or whatever it is that you have. But the rest of it really is the staples that make up a reasonable diet and th again, those and many of them are long keeping and you can make a list, I could make a list of a hundred long keeping things that if you have in your kitchen, you go shopping once a week and buy a bunch of fresh stuff, complement those long keeping things in different ways and especially in the winter, that's, that's how people eat or it's how people should eat I guess is my argument. And I can't help but think that the more exposed we all get to real food, the higher our standards are going to be the next time maybe that rack of donuts is there. Maybe you've had something fresh made the, the, the day before that the, the, it's easy to say goodbye to the donut because you've just had something that's so much better. Well, that is true. I mean, I wouldn't argue it, but there is, a, there is an, I, I think the, I think the key, maybe the key is in recognizing the difference between a good donut and a bad donut and the difference between having a donut as a staple and having a donut as a treat. That's one thing. But then there's another thing and that's the difference between recognize the difference between a donut and a bowl of oatmeal. 
And now we look at the bowl of oatmeal and we say, does this have to be the best bowl of oatmeal I ever had? Does this have to be organically grown, local oats, ground by some guy who's only doing you know, this particular thing? Or can I buy Quaker oats, which are sort of not so great, but hey, they're 89 cents for a pound and I make them for breakfast and they're still pretty good for me if you put maple syrup on them or whatever you like. They're great. And you know, my, I, have this, I have this feeling, and I'm not, gonna, I'm, I'm not saying this as well as I'd like to say, I'm not going to say it as well as, as well as I will say it two weeks from now because it's a new thought. But, but um, it's not a question of whether this head of broccoli is the best head of broccoli you could possibly buy or whether it's a standard head of broccoli from a supermarket. It's a question of whether you're eating this head of broccoli or a hamburger. And it's not a question of whether this is a McDonald's hamburger or the best possible hamburger you can eat. It's a question of whether you're eating this hamburger or this head of broccoli. And so these distinctions are all very fascinating. And I've written about this stuff all my life, and, um, or all my adult life. And, and I can appreciate you know, the good donut versus the not so good donut, the great broccoli versus the ordinary broccoli, the McDonald's hamburger versus the like hamburger that you just flip out over. I can appreciate all of that. But the main point is now that we're eating way too much by a factor of 10 in the world of animal products and highly processed food and way too little in the world of plants. And that's the big distinction. It's not about whether the broccoli comes from a farmer's market or a supermarket or whether the hamburger comes from McDonald's or your local farm. It's about whether it's a hamburger or broccoli. That's the big deal. And people have just simply, for the benefit of themselves and the entire planet, they have to start choosing. I'm not saying exclusively, I'm not a vegetarian. They have to start choosing the broccoli or the oatmeal or the whatever, rice and beans.